what do you need to know? We are going to take this course together. So it's a good idea to know what you need to know beforehand. Basically, you need to be familiar with programming because we're going to take this course I expect you to know a basic concept of programming, like loop, variables, classes, functions, etc. Also, it is a web technology, so it is important to know the basic concept of web. For example, when you type a URL and press enter, what happens? Basically, we send a request and we receive a response. So we really need to know what is happening in a web. You don't need to know a lot about it. You don't need to know what exactly happens and all details, but as long as you know the concepts and familiarity with the web that's enough obviously we're going to write html because html is something you cannot get rid of in a code and in HD in a web technologies so html is everywhere so i assume you know html with the javascript basic javascript is enough we're going to write some es6 the flavor of javascript so as long as you know javascript or you heard about it and you write some basic code that would be enough the next thing is css Obviously, we are not going to write CSS code that much, but in order to just give some design, we need to use some CSS. Again, this course is not about CSS, but as long as you know a little bit, that would be enough. And then Next.js is basically a React framework. So I expect you to know or heard about some concept of React. If you, if you haven't heard about it, or if you haven't write any code with React, it's all right, because we're going to just cover everything here. But if you know something in advance, it would be very beneficial. For example, if you know the lifecycle methods, that would be very good. What are they? If you know about the states, that would be also very good. But if you haven't heard about it, you will see all of them in the course and you will be familiar with all of them. Next thing, what tools do I use? Obviously, this is very, very optional. If you want to choose any tools, feel free to choose anything. But I am going to use these tools through this course. I'm going to use Google Chrome, but any browser would be enough. You can use Firefox, you can use Opera, you can use Safari. I don't really suggest using Internet Explorer because Internet Explorer doesn't support a lot of things and then you need to just tweak a lot of uh, technologies and tweak a lot of hacks to make things work. So, But if you're going to use any browser except Internet Explorer, everything should be all right. Within Google Chrome, we are going to use React Developer Tools. This extension is also available in Firefox or in Safari, so you can use it anywhere you like. And uh, we are going to dive in very deeply inside our code and what is happening in the React side of our code. So we are going to use React Developer Tools as extension here. Next thing we are going to use is Visual Studio Code as our IDE. So feel free to choose anything, but we are going to use VS Code or Visual Studio Code. It is available in all platforms, so you can use it in Linux, you can use it in uh, Mac OS and Windows. So I truly recommend this one and it's very popular in the community these days. You can also choose Atom ID if you want. This is also open source and it's very good with the JavaScript. You can use this one as well. Or the other option is uh, WebStorm. So WebStorm is for IntelliJ. It is not free, however, you can use a free 30-day trial. The next option, which is my favorite IDE, is also Sublime Text. Within Visual Studio Code, we are going to use some packages or extensions as well. So we are going to use auto rename tag. And basically, when you rename a tag, as you can see here, it renamed the tag also uh, the closing tag as well. Feel free if you want to use it. We are going to use bracket pairs colorize. Basically, again, this is a very handy tool. Basically, as you can see, when you when you open the curly braces, the closing one is the same color, and also this one is blue, and the closing one here is blue. So it would be very handy if you have a nested code. We're trying to avoid that much nested code, but sometimes it is just a nature of coding. So we we need to just have this uh, visualized way of seeing the differences, and we are going to use it for our snippets and uh, our. Like shortcuts, we are going to ES7 React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippet. This is very good and we are going to use it as well. So we are going to use ESLint and ESLint is going to use uh, ESLint library behind the scene just to give us a lot of ideas to write a better JavaScript code. And also we are going to use highlight matching tag. So if you have two tags and if you click in one of them, the, the closing tag will be highlighted. I found this sometimes handy. So as you can see in uh, examples, again, we can use it. 
And the last one is Prettier. We're going to use Prettier quite a lot and there will be a dedicated video about Prettier and ESLint and how to integrate these two with the VS Code. So we're going to use Prettier. We're going to have the benefit of using this uh, extension in our code and in our IDE to make us uh, make our life much easier when we save. It will reformat our code and it will be much better. So these are the tools and the things you need to know before we start the code. Again, as I said, feel free to choose any IDE you want or any tools you want. We are going to use Visual Studio Code, but it is not mandatory through the course.